In this video, we're going to change it up a bit and make a system where you have to left click to select the player. And then when you right click is when you move. So you can toggle between each player and it'll deselect any other player if you select a different one. Okay, let's get started. Uh, first thing I want to actually do here is right now, the way we made this one here, uh, when we start clicking around, if we click on objects that are not walkable, it puts the marker on top. So we're just going to make a real quick change to fix that. Uh, if we go to set destination on the player controller, this line here where we set the position to the target, we just cut that and put it after this one. We can change target to my nav mesh agent dot destination. And now it should put it to the actual position where the nav mesh is going to try walking to, which is only walkable points. So if I click on top here, now it, it'll pick the closest side, wherever the cl closest point is. Uh, so there's that one. And now we're going to start making it where you have to actually select the player. Uh, so let's see here. First thing I'm going to do is I took another model here. This is going to be the icon for when you select the player. Uh, so first thing, I'm just going to put that blue glow on it so it looks the same. Okay, and we have a prefab of that. I'm going to do... Here, let's put it first on our player. Okay, so size we will probably want... Yeah, maybe like two. Looks like it should be pretty good. So I'm just going to apply that to the prefab here and let's open this prefab. And I'm going to add an animation clip on it. We could take the same one uh, as the other animation for the click marker, but since we kind of hard coded the scale size in it, uh, it would be the same size. And this one, I think we want a bit bigger. So I'm just going to do, let's do player select marker. Okay, and animate, we're basically going to do the same thing here. So you know what, for start keyframe, I'm going to set it to two. We'll go to one second here. Set a keyframe there. And then pretty much going to do basically the same animation. So here we'll make it a little bit bigger, maybe do 2.4. Middle one, I'm going to set a little bit smaller than normal. So maybe 1.9. And we'll set this to 2.4 again and it should end on two so let's see yeah it's good enough i'm going to make it a bit slower though yeah that works for me you can obviously make this to be whatever you want it to be okay and i'm just going to disable that one back to our child here and let's go into our player controller first thing we'll want to do is we need to make a serialized field private I'll do this one as game object and then we'll set it as character selected marker okay and you know what here we're also going to need a private bool call it is selected equals false okay so if we go down to update this one here where it's checking the the most position or the most button to get the click i'm going to actually change this one to one so it's going to be a, a right click and we're going to do is selected so this way it's it has to be currently selected which we're going to set when the player clicks on it and then it's a right click so it's going to be left click on the player to select them, right click to move. Uh, so we have that. So let's set that up next. So we're going to create a new method. We'll call this, um, this is actually a built-in one. So this is 
when the player clicks the mouse with the left button. Sorry, left button. So on mouse down, uh, we're going to use that. So we'll do if the character is clicked with the left mouse button to select it. Okay, and we'll do is selected equals to true. Okay, and we gotta set the marker. So character selector marker dot set active true. Okay, so let's test that out and that should be working here. not because we haven't dragged it in yet okay so the last thing we have to do here is on our player we just have to add a collider so let's add a capsule collider and then we'll have to play around with the settings here Type maybe Yeah, something like that should be good for the height. And we'll lower the radius a little bit. Okay, let's run it again. Okay, so now we can click to highlight at least. Uh, won't unselect them yet, but it's at least getting there. Okay, so what we're going to want to do is we're going to make a new object, reset this, and I'm going to call this selection controller. So right now it's not going to do a whole lot. Uh, we're going to add a script called selection controller. So yeah, right now it won't do a whole lot, but later when I start adding stuff like uh, being able to click and drag multiple targets or select multiple different characters. This will be the script that, that keeps control of everything. So right now we'll just set it so it actually selects and unselects any other players. Okay, so in here, let's do, first thing, we won't need to see this in the inspector. So we'll do hide an inspector, then do a public game object, currently selected character. I'm not going to need starter updates. Okay, so let's make a public method. We'll call this select character. And I'm going to pass in a game object. We'll call it care to select. Okay, and in here I'm going to do currently selected character equals care to select. So we'll just call this from the player script when we actually need to tell it to, uh, that the player was selected. And we'll make another one, we'll call this deselect character. Okay, so in this one, you know what we will do, we'll get the currently selected character, dot get component, player controller, and then we'll call a method we'll create right away put a deselect character. Doesn't actually exist yet. Okay, and then after that we said currently selected character to null. And that should be really all that we need in here. So let's go back to our player script. And let's go back up here. I'm going to do, I'll add it up here. We'll do a private selection controller. Call it my selection controller. Okay, and then in start, I'm just going to do my selection controller equals find object of type selection controller. Okay, so now that we have that, 
we got to go to just seeing which method we have to add this in here. We're going to have to go into click to move. And inside here, let's do is selected equals false because we're moving, so we don't want to be selected anymore. And then we're going to do character select or my character selected marker. No, wait, sorry. Character selected marker dot set active false. Okay, so that's just turning it off and telling our controller that it's not selected. Okay, and let's go back to our on most down. Let's do if my selection controller dot currently selected character is not equal to game object, so it's not equal to this object, and my selection controller currently selected character is not equal to null. So basically, if it's not null and it's not this current game object, then we want to deselect it. Dot deselect character. Okay, and then if that's not the case, is selected equals true, set this. And we want to tell the selection controller dot select character game object. So we're telling it this is the currently selected. And now we just got to add that deselect character method and that should be it. So it's got to be public again, void deselect character. And then we do is selected equals false. Character selected marker dot seg active false. So if what this is doing is if we have a different player selected and then we click on another one, it deselects the other one that was the currently selected and changes the new one. Let's try it. So we left click and it's moving. And if we just regular right click or left click, it doesn't work unless we go there. So that works. Let's try this now. Let's duplicate our player. Move him over here, make one more. We'll move him over here. And now if we run it, okay, so we can select him, we can move. If I select one, select the other, it deselects the other one. And you can start moving multiple.